Hello everybody and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today I'm going to do a quick watercolor painting. In front of me I have a 10 by 10 square of Stonehenge aqua paper. Uh, it's 140 pound and a cold press, 100% cotton, and I have it marked off here, 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 and here to 8 by 10 just to kind of give me a rough estimate of um, where the image will be after we paint. So I just soaked it with water and we'll jump right into it. I'm going to use the Ron Ranson Hake brush and scene wise I'm thinking we'll kind of go for something a little wintry. We'll kind of go fast and loose. We'll try to leave some white of the paper for some snow. Here we have some raw sienna. A little bit of sky color in. And we'll grab a little bit of ultramarine. I just put out some fresh ultramarine, so I'll probably pull a big amount. I kind of want this to be nice and airy. And while we're at it, I'll use this really light ultramarine to kind of give a little bit of shadow on snow. So I'll kind of map out my area. We'll have a stream in the middle. Background tree line in here. So we'll do a simple S shape composition. I'll grab some Payne's Gray. Whenever I'm doing anything with um, a stream, I really do like Payne's Gray for the edge of the water. I'm going to jump right into some background tree. So this is raw sienna. Darken it with a little bit of Payne's Gray. So we're painting wet and wet with this. The idea of a little bit of grass popping up along that bank. One thing that's throwing me off a little bit with this 8x10 is that my 8x10, the bottom would end about here. So I want to keep an eye on where the image would actually rest. Let's darken this up a little bit. Some raw si uh, burnt sienna. Yeah, Hammy. So I'm just feeding that in to where we had that raw sienna mix. This is some burnt sienna. Let's switch over to the number one rigger some ultramarine, some burnt sienna, a little bit of Payne's Ray, just mixing kind of a dark. My paper is buckling a little bit, so I'm just pressing it down to flatten it. Put some background trees in. Yeah, Hammy, what's up? So we're going wet and wet with this rigger and putting 
our branches in. I'm going to bring down a little bit of reflection right here. Kind of move my bank up a little bit. Everything kind of feels a little um, whimsical and soft right now. When we'll do a dry off, we'll kind of solidify where everything is and what everything's going to be. Okay, I'm going to do a pause and we're going to dry off real quick. All right, so I did a quick dry off with the blow dryer. Now I am going to do kind of more solid forms here. I'm going to grab some raw sienna. And this is taking the medium Ron Ranson Hake brush. Just kind of placing this grassy area. We have this grassy area here as well. Some burnt sienna fed into this wet and wet. You could grab a little bit of Payne's Gray and feed it into these watery spots on the paper. I'm going to bring this down a little bit and have this reflection take place. I'm going to bring an object up. We're going to do a burnt sienna, Payne's gray mix. Some trees come up. We'll let them come up off the page. We're just using the hake on the side to create these. Since it's going to be winter, I'll use that brownish color for foliage. edge. So the top edge of the mat is going to be about there, but I'll bring it off. Okay. Let's grab a dark. So this is just Payne's Gray and Ultramarine. I'm just going to kind of use that number one rigger for branches, just kind of build up the density of those spots. You want to be wary of passing over the foliage spots because it's going to be wet in that spot and you're going to have a diffusion take place, which is okay. You're going to get different textures, but just be prepared that that's going to happen. And I'll do a isolated reflection of that piece right here. Now in this spot, we'll bring up a thicker tree trunk. This will be the reflection for it. And I'll use burnt sienna. I'll grab a little bit of water. When I grab water, I just kind of touch the tip, just the edge of the hake in the water at this point. I'm 
do two trunks. Get a little bit of foliage, but since it's closer, I'm gonna get a stronger concentration. I'm gonna grab some light red oxide. There's some branches. Have some pop up here. Other side. I'm going to grab some burnt sienna and just kind of close off this gap. And when I put the mat over it, it should make more sense. You can even scrape right here for texture. I haven't scraped in a while, so I'll throw that in. Some Payne's Gray. Do another grouping in the front right here to kind of close off this side. Just kind of scrape willy nilly to get random textures. Let's see, let me darken to bring that foreground a little bit closer, overlapping. This object in the back. I'm going to pause for a quick dry off. All right, and because it lightened up a little bit while drying off, I'm going to grab some burnt sienna and Payne's Gray, add a little bit more foreground texture, a little bit more darker values tonally. And at this point I'm pretty much dry brushing this effect. Okay, and if you want, you could put a um, few branches, uh, closer trunks right here in those darker values to give that depth. But let's do one last pause to dry off. All right, let's sign this and put a mat over it. And as usual, um, you're welcome to follow along with any of these tutorials. And if you ever follow along and somebody says, hey, I'd like to buy that, feel free. You are more than welcome to sign your name and, um, and, and sell anything that you do when you follow along with any of these tutorials. That being said, um, please like, subscribe, and follow. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, things you'd like to see, let me know. I have a Patreon account if you would like to support this page, this channel. Um, I have exclusive content on there, but I have two simple, very cheap tiers. So I could potentially you know, consider that. That being said, it's totally fine if you don't want to. I understand. Just liking and subscribing is more than enough. So, um, this was a big 10 by 10 inch and I had painted it for a 8 by 10 opening. Let's uh, look at it right about here and I'll pick up so you get a better look. All right, I hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to you all soon. Have a great day.